Hello guys, this is Jerry speaking, welcome to LJP Speed and React episode 326 and today we're reacting to Purple Tales Podcast episode 8. Now, Carrie Sinston of the Purple Tales Podcast, if you watch this episode right now, you know how much time I'm going to get ready to react to the newer episodes of Purple Tales Podcast. Now... I have reacted to seven episodes now, and now it's going to be my eighth episode. So, and right after the eighth, I'm going to just go ahead and get ready for bed after this is over. So, I'm releasing this on tomorrow, which is, I'm taping this right now, which is Wednesday, and I'm releasing this tomorrow. So, there you go. So, anyway, let's react to this in five, four, three, two, one, go. Continuing our look now at the best in children's television. This morning, the new kid, or dinosaur on the block. So the big purple reptile that kids can't resist. The big purple <laughs> reptile. dinosaur. Teaches about love, and, and it just kind of like soothes the kids. And always, there's that signature song. It's certainly amazing the power of three little notes. Carrie Stenson, how are you today? I am wonderful. Nancy, how are you? I am fine, thank you. And I do want you to know that I now when I go to sleep, I'm counting dinosaurs instead of sheep. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I mean, this just kind of gets under your skin, doesn't it? In a yeah. good way, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, of course, <laughs> in a good way. But I can understand that, you know, if... If, I, maybe I don't know. I, I'll, maybe I'll have to come up with something new to count to yeah. get to sleep. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, and that will depend on who you bring in to visit us. I yes. guess. Yeah. Well, and that what's so much fun is that each week it's someone completely different with all these crazy stories. That mm -hmm. it, it's amazing how I'm learning something each week. That's true, because not everyone is there at the same moment right. of time. And I, I'll tell you what, we got a really nice note. I just want to throw at you from Angela. She said she's 27. Thank you, Carrie, for deciding to share all of this. Um, she says she's 27 now, and she saw you on tour when uh -huh. she was five or six years old, actually the second time seeing Barney. So she was a rabid fan. Well, and I was probably 27. When I... Well, that's still too old. Yeah. That's still <laughs> that's too old. That, but no, but you know what I'm saying? But no, at that time, it's funny how we... <laughs> mm. Switch, but she's, right. no, she's a grown-up now, and she said she just loved Barney, and she said she's been so curious as she's gotten older what the production is like. And that's what we've been talking about, because she said she has worked as a production assistant sure. and a photographer, right. and now she's getting to learn about the secrets of the behind-the-scenes sure. production and, and video yeah. and on camera. And I think what's surprising people is how big the production was. I, don't, I think it's it looked like such a, a simple show that it was probably a simple production, and that's far from the truth. Well, and especially the buses. I mean, I, I, I remember sure. someone saying that one of the buses was Garth Brooks' tour bus. Yes. So, you know, these things yep. were decked out. Yes. I mean, you were treated quite well as a performer, weren't you? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But we were also on the road nine months out of the year, going from city to city to city to city to city. Wow. Which was incredible. And, and how many people were crewing on that, would you say? I mean, the whole, the whole, the whole tour production itself? was 50. We had 50 people. Between yeah. cast and kids and... All those rock and roll roadies that we had out there. Wow, <laughs> that's true. That's that. I, I can't wait till some of those guys come. Yes. I mean, so you are. That's the whole point. Is you are in the process of contacting as many people. People are coming yes. to you now who were on yes. the show or had something to do with it. Yes, and it's it's so exciting. Um, we have Bob LaValle coming up soon. And now who's Bob? Bob uh, did set design, so he designed those beautiful sets okay. that we had and mm. took it in all, all kinds of new directions. Yeah, um, very close to my heart, Sloan Coleman, who. Um, I've been the, hearing her name yeah, a lot. She, she hired me and took me took me around the world. And uh, uh, Jake Berry, who did the tour, they're going to actually come on together. So I'm very excited about that. Nice. Jake is going to come in. and uh, He's the one that brought us those rock and roll roadies. Oh, so, good. So good. excited about that. We have a couple of the kids coming up soon. Okay. Uh, Ricky Carter. The Backyard Gang. Yeah, the back, yeah. Back, Backyard Friend. Okay. Or backyard Gang, sorry. Okay. Um, but Ricky Carter will be here. They play Derek. He's a rapper now. He is. I want him to rap for us, for sure. Rap yeah. Barney songs, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> So everyone's obviously going to want to come watch that show, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Pia Hamilton, who was Min, one of the original kids as well, okay. and she's on Broadway right now. 
in The Lion oh King. My. So that's going to be lots of fun. Oh, really? She's in The Lion King? Okay, um, speaking of Lion King, there's, there's going to be a, another movie that, that, a live action movie, Lion King, that's coming out in, um, this year. So there you go. And very excited, Bob West is going to be with us, too, who was the mm. original That's voice your of, voice. Original Barney voice will be here. Everyone has asked about Bob West. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, will, I'll, I'm, so I'm saving excited. my purple shirt for that. I actually have a I have a purple shirt. I'm going to wear that for Bob West. I love it. So and, uh, and you know I got to tell Bob because she hasn't worn a purple shirt for me. So. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> it tells me where Bob ranks. That's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but I know we had um, Shelly on talking about yes. the dancing mm -hmm. and so on. Yes. And then when I hear about you and the costume and how how are you able to really navigate all of that dancing because you didn't have it dancing background. No. no, and you know the crazy thing about that is that my mom was a dancer. Yeah. A trained professional dancer. She is still dancing today. She's I'm not gonna give her age because she'd kill me, but um a long time, let's just say that. And she was my original choreographer. Oh really? Um, for she, Barney. For Barney. For Barney. They just asked me if I could dance and I didn't want to tell them I couldn't. You so never I said, say no. That's right. You never right. say no, everybody. Absolutely. Mm, no. Yeah, getting, <laughs> you want to tip it to getting into the industry, always say yes. Always say and yes. So I yeah. did, and I just got the sing-along. It was a 30-minute sing-along, and I got the clips, and I took it to my mother, and she taught me that routine, which I did for three years. Wow. All over the world, the, the same, same sing-along with my mom's choreography. Before you've heard Miss Penny, we've mentioned about Miss Penny, sweet right. Miss Penny. Okay. Um, and I showed her that routine three years later, and she said it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, you still do it? Just, well, I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not asking you to do it right now. <laughs> but could I mean? Do you? It do, might take me a time or two, but I bet your mom still knows it. Probably, she probably does. We need to have her on. She too. probably does. But the key to my success was my mother. She, she taught, and she's strict. She, she is strict. <laughs> And she would go over and over again so I could get those. And part of it was, and we talked about this a little bit, the safety of it. When you're launching a 50-pound costume and you're blind and doing bell kicks and turns and spins, I mean, you can hurt yourself, you can hurt other people. And, yeah. of course, on that road tour, you're doing it every night on a big stage. And so the chance of disaster is, is pretty good. And we've heard a, little, a few little suggestions of where disaster was yeah, just yes. right there. <laughs> yes, and, and we might uh, have to bring some, we might have evidence of some of that at, at some point that we okay. may have to show. good. Good to show? Okay, I like show, that. Show a couple. Uh, okay. Bruises? Uh, no, 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 I don't know about bruises. Broken bones? No, no, no. X-rays? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, none of that. Okay. My mom listens to this, so we don't want her to... Oh, because she doesn't know how badly hurt you were? <laughs> Moms never... Do. They don't need to know. They don't need to know. But dancing hurt. was a very important part of the whole Barney experience. It, it absolutely was. And is. is. And that brings us to today. We yeah. are I'm very fortunate to have the first... Um, now I'm hitting the mic. Because we're I getting, haven't we're done getting excited. Yet. I haven't done... Yeah, I know. I'm excited. <laughs> now I'm slapping the mic. Um, but we're bringing back one of the kids... Um, today, oh, wow. who is a dancer, and uh, so excited to have Marissa, who played Hannah on the show. Welcome, um, Marissa. So good to have you here. Thank she you was so much. Seasons four, five, and six. Okay, so tell us about your audition. How did you get involved as one of the kids? And this was for on on the TV show, correct? Correct. The yes, PBS the TV show. show. Mm -hmm. So, what were you doing up until you got the audition, and just all the yeah. details? So I um, was a normal kid. I was um, went to public school, and um, one day we got a letter that um, went home with us, and it said, if your kid would like to audition for the Barney show, you know, have your parents sign this and bring it back. And so me and my friends were so excited. And because you knew what the Barney yes. show was by yes. then. Okay. Yeah, like, like, season, on she was on seasons four, five, and six. So by that point, yes. okay. the show was, was a huge hit. And yes. how old were you? I was either third grade or fourth grade. Okay. I think it was the end of third grade. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, me and my friends were planning what outfit we were going to wear. And we thought it was so cool. We have this chance to be on TV. And so I took it home, took the um, paper home to my mom and mm -hmm. had her sign it. I was so excited. And she was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> she signed it and was like, all right, you have fun. You know, good experience to audition. Um, and so we would, it was in our school library. Um, and we were lined up outside the library. And, and, all and at this point, had you auditioned for anything? No. 
nothing. I was a dancer, so I had taken, I took dance classes um, at a dance studio, and other than mm. that, that was the extent of my performing, really. Um, you know, school plays, things sure. like that. Mm. Um, so as friends are going into the library, then they come out and we're like, what did you do? And so everyone is saying that they sang happy birthday to the cameraman. So I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> cool, I can do that. Um, and so I go in and I don't remember everything from the audition, but I remember that they asked, like, what do you like to do? I said, I love to sing and dance. Um, and they said, oh, well, do you have something you want to sing? And I said, yes, I have a song and a dance that I will do for you. <laughs> which so, looking back is so funny yeah. to think about. Um, so I sang Singing in the Rain, which was my oh, favorite wow. musical, sang it and did a tap dance to it that I would, you know, that I probably just made up on the playground at some point. Um, yeah. And so did Singing in the Rain, did my little tap dance and said, mm. thank you, and then left. And so, um, and, and then I didn't hear anything for a while. Um, mm. I can't remember the timing since I was young, but um, then we got a call that they wanted me for a callback. And so um, the callback process, I remember thinking it was very lengthy, but it could have been shorter in reality. Mm. Um, but I went to several callbacks. And then the final one that I remember was actually in the Las Colinas studios, which is where we filmed. Which is between um, Dallas and Fort Worth. So the, yes. the original right. series was done in Allen. And okay. so they had moved. Because this so was Las a big Colinas studio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The show <laughs> had become time. a big hit. Yeah. yeah. So we did a big workshop there. I think it was like a whole weekend um, where they got us with different groups of kids. And they were was this to... with Miss Penny? Yes. Yep. Aww. They were trying to see, you know, they, they taught us songs. They taught us um, a dance number. I want to say we did the, I like to roll in the leaves, like a fall. Wait, can um, I hear a little more of that? Something about the cool breeze. I don't remember it all, but we, I remember we had a scarecrow, and for some reason I remember that. Um, and so we did a whole little song and dance, and we did acting stuff. I had never done any acting, and I just thought it was a blast. Like, I was having the time of my life. And, um, and you know, my parents, I think, were very, like, gauging my expectations. Like, this is big, and there's a ton of kids here. And yeah. um, and so then one day at school, I was I was in my classroom, and I remember my parents walked in, and I was like, why are you here? And they said, we're here about something very exciting that happened a few months ago. And, you know, it took me a few minutes because it, it, it was like I was on with third grade and didn't know <laughs> anything about it. And um, and then it dawned on me what um, what they were talking about. And I was like, wait, really? You know, They came to school to tell you. They came to school because they got the call. And, you know, they can't. They're like, we got to go pick her up and tell her right now. Mm. Um, so they, they I said, are you talking about Barney? <laughs> and they they just looked at me and nodded. And so I remember, you know, my friends were there. And I remember we left. They were, I think they probably took me to get ice cream or something. You know, so <laughs> oh, my. Um, but I remember as we were walking out, I would just, I would look at my mom and we would, like, squeal. And then we would keep walking. And then I would look at her again and we would squeal. So it was just, like, surreal. Like, is this really happening? But it was, it was awesome. So how much later then did you start production? So I had to ask my parents about this. Um, <laughs> my mom says they got a call on like the Monday before Thanksgiving break and they said we're ready for her to start we want you to bring her the Monday after Thanksgiving so it was like in two weeks I don't remember it being that fast but um it was it was quick wow mm -hmm. yeah and you're hearing a common story once again that she didn't hear something for a while and mm -hmm. then and it was just because it it just got so big and this was a small organization that mm -hmm. all of a sudden, all of this was happening so fast and having to find new kids and mm -hmm. all of the things they were doing. Well, and it was interesting mm -hmm. because once I, once I got, once I got the job, then, um, they had us come in and did a lot, you know, we didn't just start filming the next Monday. Then they had us come in and, you know, see the school. My parents saw where, who was going to be my teacher in the school. Okay. Okay. So you were on, I mean, just like the kids on tour, you were also schooled on the set. Yep. I would go back and forth. So, um, if we were filming a show, a show is typically, we would rehearse on a Monday. We would film Tuesday, Wednesday, and half of Thursday. And then um, the, the rest of Thursday and Friday, we would be at school. And then we would usually stay at the Barney School, called it Barney School. Uh, we would stay at Barney School usually like another week or um, to get caught up because we would miss some just because we were filming all the time. Um, so we'd stay at Barney School, get caught up, and then just go back to school if we didn't have another show coming up. So we, I would go back and forth depending on the schedule. But when you went back to school, you're now a TV star. So what was mm -hmm. that like? Um, it was... It, it was... Very cool that I was on TV, but it also just was normal to me because it just became, I mean, that's all I knew. And um, my friends, 
thought it was really cool and then it became normal to them too and um when we would meet new people or new new people would come to school I would never say you know you don't say hi I'm Marissa I was on the Barney show <laughs> so I would never have to tell people my friends would be right there with me did you know she was on Barney she was on Barney <laughs> so they would always be the ones to tell to tell everyone but um it was it was a it was a different experience um going in and out Three of school years. Three years. So that's why it became so, it was normal to me. Um, but I realized looking back how, diff, you know, I missed a lot of stuff at school um, and just had a very different, a very different childhood for those three years than the average kid. But it didn't feel, it didn't feel different. It felt just, it just felt normal. <laughs> and you would be recognized on the street too, wouldn't you? Not yeah, just at I, school. Yes. Um, <laughs> not all the time, but I, I do remember times we would be like out to eat and, um, a parent would come over with their kid and you could tell they were walking over, you know, don't want to interrupt you. Um, and so that was very cool and weird as a kid mm -hmm. to, to get that experience and see it face to face and see people that were coming up and being like, my daughter loves Barney. She just wanted to say, hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. And I just was like, no, that <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> see, unfortunately... Carrie didn't get that because he was always in the suit. <laughs> no, nah, it's true. Well, until now. Until, 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 until now. Until now. Now he's getting all That's right. Yeah, coming until up to now. Um, and once again, remember, there was no social media back then. Right. right. Probably a little easier to handle, perhaps. Yes. Oh, yes. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, I don't remember it being nuts, um, anything crazy. Um, I do remember I got lot. They would. I don't remember how we got it. Maybe the show gave it to my parents. But I remember getting fan mail. Mm -hmm. Um, and my mom would sit down with me and I would write, I would respond to every single oh, one and great. I would send them a photo. We had promo photo, uh, photos of like me with Barney. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, look at you. You look exactly the same. <laughs> oh my, and you, and you still got the socks on. <laughs> no, I do not. For those, uh, for for those who aren't seeing us, she doesn't really have the socks on. <laughs> yeah, those are some good socks on. <laughs> cute. You're so cute. Oh, goodness. Thank you. But so now, but you weren't her Barney. No, I was not the actor doing that. So there was another actor. Yeah, now, yeah. Was? David Joyner okay. um, was in the it was in the Barney suit for the majority of the time that I was on the show. Um, mm -hmm. And I have fond I mean, so we did lots of rehearsals with him, and I have fond memories of him. He was a goof. I just remember him. We need to, if he's a goof, <laughs> we goof. definitely need to get him. <laughs> well, absolutely. Okay, good, good. And then absolutely. Josh did. A, I did a few yeah. shows with Josh. So because um, she then, was there for mm -hmm. yes, the, the whole fire. costume. The... Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Josh is a goof too. So it was, <laughs> mm, it was, well, yeah, I think you've seen a theme with the uh, with the mm, I'm thinking so. So, but so, how well did you get to know the other kids that you were acting with, and 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 the the grown ups and Miss Penny and everyone? Oh yeah, um, the people were the best part about it. Um, the kids. I mean, I was with the kids a lot. We so there was a large cast. I don't know how many, but there would only be four or five on a show at a time. So we weren't necessarily with the same kids all the time, but. Um, there would be other, there would be the kids that were on the next show would be in school with you. So we'd have a good group of people. Um, oh, and there's, there's some of my friends. Oh, okay. So can you name them? Yes. Erica okay. Rhodes is on the top. Um, we were pretty good friends um, on the show. And then uh, Chase. Can we get that picture up again, please? Chase Gallatin and Lucian Douglas, I believe. That was the very first okay. show. That's the first show she did. That was oh, the that. first. That was Camp One Run Around. It was the first video. There we go. Oh, yep, look. look. I was a little baby then. Cute, <laughs> cute. <laughs> and, and you've got the t-shirts and everything. Do you still have any of those t-shirts? So or? I was asking my parents. I think they have some paraphernalia, but I need to. <laughs> I, we we got to dig it out of the boxes somewhere. Sure. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. That is so cute. And now, Marissa, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like... You had braces? Was it in season I did. six? I, got, I think it must have been season six. Um, it got to a point where, you know, my orthodontist was telling my parents yeah. she really needs braces. <laughs> so, my, you know, we, they always had to go to the show. Uh, you know, we were instructed, and my mom actually tells me about this a lot, um, that, you know, we don't get our hair cut by anyone else. Barney people had to cut our yes. hair. And you too? Me? Not me. Okay. Well, <laughs> they didn't care Not about Barney. my hair. Obviously, Bernie always <laughs> had perfect kidding. hair. <laughs> true, right. true. But with my hair being so long, that was one thing they really stressed to my parents. Mm. Nobody touches her hair. <laughs> so, wow. um, so with the braces, my parents had to go to them and talk about it and... And so they said, get the clear kind. So I was bummed I didn't get to get all the cool colors. Oh. And, you know, <laughs> but the things pretty, you do for, well, and pretty teeth, it worked. But, yes. that, but oh. I mean, that, to have that on television, you know, at, at that age, you might, you might have felt a little obvious. Or I, I don't remember no. caring about that at all. 
I remember just being bummed that I couldn't get all the cool colors like my friends got in her braces. So, you know. <laughs> but you were on TV. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So it's a trade-off. <laughs> yes. So what happened at the end of your three years? What? Why didn't she keep going? So um, my third season, I actually decided to leave on my own. Um, and I was telling Carrie, I, looking back now, it's, so, I, it's interesting that I decided to do that. I was going into middle school. And I was really getting to where I was missing a lot. I remember sixth grade, I missed the first month of school. So I didn't even get to do that whole, and that was the year you're the oldest kids in school. And I remember being kind of bummed that I didn't get to do that, um, but loving what I was doing on the show. And finally, at, um, going into middle school, I just told my parents, you know what, I think I'm, I'm done. And I, I think they said, all right, think about it really hard, but if, you know, it's your decision, and if that's what you decide. And so... Um, so I think there were only a few shows left in the season. Um, and I think I was getting, I was getting taller. Finally started getting some height. So maybe you were really the first kid to do that. Is most that right? Of them, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Most of them just when they, when there was a certain height, a certain, okay. certain age. So you were I don't know. I guess call me stubborn. I wanted it to be on my own terms. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think Courtney did tell us that that was, she was very, she very that. upset mm-hmm. she grew and yeah. Yeah. she couldn't be on anymore. The tour. I, yeah. I was mm-hmm. I was really involved with I I danced a lot and I, we had to do a lot of adjustments with my schedule which my dance teachers were amazing and just said that's fine we'll because you know we I was at I was in Las Colinas from seven a.m. until four thirty oh there's some uh, Look, oh tap looks like tap shoes yes <laughs> I was very excited for that show I got to Miss Penny got to teach me a tap dance mm-hmm. um, loved Miss Penny she was the, I looked up to her so much and. Um, She was a loving but strict teacher, and so I have really fond memories of her. Mm -hmm. Um, So Mm -hmm. I remember when I found out that I got to, that she was going to choreograph a tap dance for me, she came up to Barney School. So Barney School was upstairs. The (laughs) the studios were all downstairs. She came up into our classroom, which didn't happen normally, um, and she said, hey, come here. I want you to show me, like, show me your tap dance for, that you're learning, you know, at your studio. Show me what you're doing for recital so I know, like, what level you're on. And so I'm up there in my tennis shoes on the carpet, just tapping for her. And she's like, okay, got it. And then she went back and choreographed a tap dance for me. And I remember just thinking, that was so special. I was very proud of that. (laughs) And and you always felt the same way about Miss Penny. Oh, absolutely. Because she was so great with everyone. And and as she said, so loving. And you've got to remember she's dealing with a child who had more dance skills than I had. I mean, she was having to deal with adults and having different levels to work with. So some of the kids and some of the the dancers, some of the um, adults had dancing skills, and then some of us had had nothing. And she she was able to work with all of us, and she was. She was absolutely strict. Yes. You know, if there was a move or a step she wanted, you were going to learn that step. But but she worked with you on that. Mm -hmm. Mm. I know your last episode Mm -hmm. was You Are Special. Is that true? So I don't remember the name of it. Okay, um, well, I'm going to tell you. But okay, it was, I believe you. You are special. Okay, okay. I do my homework. You're the only one. That's very <laughs> The good. only one like you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, I do remember the last scene that I shot, and I don't. Um, we were three little pigs, and I had a, you know, pig nose and pig ears, um, and so it, it was fun. At the end of the very last take, they said, "Oh, something, something went wrong with the camera shot. We need one more take." So we're like, "Okay, you know, that's normal." Um, And we did another take, and then out of nowhere, the crew just, like, bombarded me with silly string and covered me in silly string. Um, It was my special send-off, my special goodbye. And Oh, yep, there it is. And there it is. Oh, my my (laughs) goodness gracious. Yeah, and uh, it's one of the things that I just wanted to see in this Barney Bloopers episode. So, basically, what it was when I came of this, that was the point when I comes with these whole scary moments. I'm like, God help me. <laughs> and to be fair, um, one of the moments that I had with, uh, Bar- with Barney and my, uh, with her, when I did a reaction video to You Are Special, it was awesome. So there you go. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. There we go. So, which was very, really special. Um, I know that you know, there was a lot of adults working on this. Like, this was their full-time job, and they made us kids feel very mm-hmm. special and um, very loved, and that, that was something they didn't have to do. They went out of their way for that, and um, that was cool. Such a family. I mean, That's it, family. That's yeah. what I hear from yes. everyone. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And we had fun stuff like that, too. Oh, look at the... Uh, uh, there's Bob West. Oh, so the, oh that's what Bob looks like. Okay, good. Yeah. And then oh. Terry, one of the producers, I believe. Do you keep in touch with any of the kids that you... So we oh, like? Terry. Yeah, Terry was yeah. the uh, assistant director. Okay, yes. Mm. Um, yeah, we... So we haven't been keeping in touch as much lately. Obviously, with social media and Facebook, it's easier to see what everyone's up to and like, oh, she has a kid and, you know, <laughs> what everyone's doing. Um, but in co- when I was in college, we got, um, you know, that was not as far removed from when we were on the show. So we all reached out to each other and um, a big group of us got together in Dallas. And um, I think it was maybe over Christmas break. And we all went to dinner, yep. which was cool. And I, I'm, now I'm thinking we need to do it again. So Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think you, you can see where this is going. Absolutely. <laughs> so our kid reunion. But so let's talk about how Barney, your experience with Barney on Barney, has actually made you who you are today. I mean, from so once you ended it, you you know you were a normal kid in high school, mm-hmm. dancing, singing, and mm-hmm. doing all that, right? Yep. Mm. Um, yeah, Barney, I think has had a huge influence on my life. I am now a dance teacher. Um, I own a dance studio um, out in Wiley, Texas. But go back to where the col- you got a very special degree. I do. Never. Yes. I mean, so this, I, I want to start there. Yes. Okay. I went to A and M. I'm an Aggie. Woo for all those Aggies Giggum. out there. <laughs> um, and people are like, at A&M has the dance program, it's, which is growing a lot now. But when I, when I went to A&M, it was um, smaller. The dance program was smaller. Um, and I got one of the first degrees um, in, we call it university studies with a dance concentration. And then I have a minor in business and communications. So, yeah. um, so it was awesome. I, I think I went to college thinking, oh, I need to do something else. My parents are the most supportive parents in the world. And they were like, my mom's like, are you, you don't want to keep dancing? I was like, well, yeah, I want to keep dancing, but you know, toying with what am I going to do with my life? And, um, Mm -hmm. and then I just always come back to dance. Um, I can't imagine my life without it. It's my whole life. And so I'm, um, I got a wonderful dance education at A&M and then have Mm -hmm. been was able to just gone on business woman. Yeah. Start uh, teaching dance and opened a studio Mm -hmm. and um it's red door dance academy and uh it's an awesome ride it's an awesome ride and it's awesome to be able to do what i love for a living and um to be able to give the gift of dance to so many kids still Um, do they know that you were on barney did they yeah, so or their it's, moms probably do for sure. Yes, I think most of them yes. do. Um, it's it's on my bio and it's not a secret. But but again, you know, you don't you don't say hi. I'm Marissa. I was on the Barney show. <laughs> Still. But, um, so people will sometimes I'll I'll hear kids you know, out in the hall outside of my office. That's Miss Marissa. Did you know she was on Barney? So like sometimes people are like, no, I didn't know that. So some a lot of them do know. But mm-hmm. did you did you go to through a Barney camp? Barney Did you guys camp. do Barney Camp when you were... Because the stories that you're telling are exactly the way we were still doing it um, when I was doing the show. Um, the way we were recording, the, okay. the way the kids were, the school, and all of that. Barney Camp, was that like a week where... I... Where, where you, got to, you got to meet, obviously, David and the other actors. You got to see the costumes yes. and, and kind of prepare yourself. Yes. And that, um, I think, when we were doing that, they had the parents come in. Yes. And, you know, because it was... Obviously, we were young, and the parents had to be on board and know what was going on. Um, because I know my parents were sort of like, okay, we're going to do this. Our daughter is going to be an actress on TV and work with these adults all day that we don't know. And they said that after they met, had the meeting with the producers and with everyone, they were like, okay, I think Jim Rowley um, was there. That's um, a memory that my parents have of him being very, um, warm. And they knew once they met with everybody. Yeah, wonderful man that produced and directed the show for years and years and years. Yes. So and parents have to, have, your parents had to be a part of all of this. Oh, yeah, a huge part. They We lived in downtown Dallas, and they had to drive me to Las Colinas every morning at 7 a.m. and then pick me up at 4.30. Um, so that was a big commitment, just that alone. And, um, you know, all of the things that are involved with that. And I was a pretty um, self-motivated kid, but we had, you know, we would get our script. I don't remember yeah. how long before, maybe two weeks before. And I would, they would have to, did you have you memorized your lines? But, um, and we'd get our little cassette tape back when there were cassette tapes with the, oh, with the songs mm-hmm. and we'd have to learn the songs. And, mm-hmm. um, so. And then you did choreography, you went through choreography. Yep. Yeah. We did that at rehearsal. So we had to do this, learn that we had to memorize the script and the songs ahead of time. And then we had to, we would, 
um, go out and record the songs before we did the show, um, which I thought was, I thought that was so fun. I would not say I'm a singer, but it was very, it was just a very fun experience as a kid to, you know, get in front of a microphone and, and sing all of the songs. Because um, the songs were recorded during the production. Oh, yeah. so you didn't, so there wait, was, there, explain. So she would sing it the week before. And then uh, during the, the actual so you taping, were lip -syncing. you were lip-syncing. Yeah, well, but we were always told to, their, to sing. To we their, were always so said, like. really sing yeah. so that it looks real. Right, um, but it was but, to, yeah. to themselves. So they would... They, right. Yeah. Our mics would be turned off at that point, and they would oh, have... So okay. you would hear the um, you would hear the song with our voice over the speakers, and then we would sing while they were filming. Now, the dinosaurs' mics were not. They were live. Right. Because oh. if I decided to do a jump or we did a move or something and they wanted to add something to it. So the song was recorded, but if they wanted to add something, if that, if that makes sense. Living over it. Add living yeah. over it, they could ad lib live. My, that, that's tough. I mean, could the, and then if somebody ad libs something live and suddenly Barney does a swing or a step, mm -hmm. you had to be prepared to mm -hmm. move out of the way. And that's what, <laughs> that's what Barney Camp was all about. Um, In the beginning, allowing them and letting them know um, they would let them look at the costumes, they would get to meet the actors, they would do some... And the parents were there, and, and just kind of let everyone understand what's going to happen, and if he starts to fall or any of those things, get the heck out of the way. Yeah, and after um, after three years, it really did get to be just, you know, we didn't have to think about it too hard. I mean, we had to work on our parts and our choreography, but it was just normal to be dancing next to a purple dinosaur. No. <laughs> do you think that built your imagination? Uh, yes, I'm sure. And just being around the whole creative <laughs> process, you know, of 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 what Barney was and seeing how it was created. Um, you know, I got to see all the behind the scenes as we were doing it. And so getting to see how something like that was created. Um, and now I'm now I'm creating shows all the time with my dancers. So and you have children. So I, I we do. have to know if your children know your Barney history. So my children are still really young. I have a four year old daughter, uh, Colby, and then I have twin three year old boys. Oh boy, that's wow. Nasher. So it's a full house <laughs> at my house. It's very loud and crazy and um, and awesome. So they are too young to really know. They don't know that I was on Barney. Um, but have they seen any? Have you showed them any episodes? Not no, explaining to them, but just no, not yet. No we Barney? don't do a lot of TV, okay. but we're going to show them. I need to get. So I have all of my shows on VHS, mm -hmm. and I don't have oh, a VHS, VHS player. player. Yeah, we've all talked <laughs> so, about that. Yep. So you know, I have to. Um, I'll have to get it on. I think Amazon Prime or right, yeah, or something. right. But um, it's coming. We're gonna show show them. But the music is still a part of our life. Um, yeah. So I, without even thinking about it, I just start singing, "I Love You" to them. For example, is one of our like that's one of our staples. We sing that every night um, when we put them to bed. <laughs> so um, and and I don't even think anything of it until you know until you like, we're sitting we talk? here talking about it. I'm like that is. That's pretty crazy. That's just stuck with me this whole time. <laughs> so, yeah. to your husband, when did he find out you were on Barney? Did he know? I mean, was was he impressed? Was he thought? What did what What was his reaction? So, <laughs> I, I again, I was I was never the one to bring it up, um, <laughs> and so I'm sure I don't have a specific memory of exactly when it came out, but I'm sure one of my friends told him and said, "Hey, did you know?" Um, and I think he, he thought it was cool. And I remember we had one of our college friends who really, he was like, what? And he, I think he made a, he made like a Facebook group that was like fan club for Marissa. That's he was awesome. like trying to, Ooh, <laughs> he was trying okay. to be silly with it. And, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, and then, you know, now it's just, it's a, a normal part of our story. And, um, and then of course my husband would, well, he wasn't my husband at the time. Um, I met him in college. He, another you know, Aggie. Yep, another yeah. Aggie. Yeah. Okay. Aggies. Go. Those Aggies. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then he told his parents, and I do remember, so his family used to do big family reunions every year, and the first one, you know, I knew it was serious when I got invited to the family uh -huh. reunion, and uh, the first one, they said, when you come, bring a video of you on Barney. Uh -huh. I'm thinking, okay, okay. So I brought a video, and, you know, we're all 20 of us sitting at the reunion. <laughs> they put in, I don't know what it was, maybe Camp One or around or something, put in one of the videos, and everyone's watching it, and like, this is so cool. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, you're, you're a TV star. Yeah, I mean, that that's yeah. it. I mean, you all are famous for what you did for as your as your starting career and actually your startup career it's it's funny because this happens to me a lot um that same concept where people come up i had a guy come up to me this week and he said congratulations on purple tales podcast it's amazing 
I, I'd never met him. I, somehow through the room, <laughs> it had gone across, and everyone kept coming up to me. I, I didn't even have to introduce myself or tell anything that I did because the whole room knew about it. So, yeah. Yeah, and you think, um, you think, oh, Barney, it's a it's a kids show. Um, but I have through the years, I I have gotten once. You know, Facebook wasn't around when I was first on the show, but once it came to be, I would get messages on Facebook, and I still do. I still get messages sometimes from fans um, or people that said, I watched you growing up, and they, they'll they name specific videos, like The Night Before Christmas, which was one of my favorites, um, and they'll say, I loved watching you, like, thank you so much, or I'll even get messages from parents saying um, that their kids, you know, how much it taught their kids growing up, mm-hmm. and um, it's crazy because you just think, it's a kid's show and for me it was just something i it was just part of my childhood um but then you hear all of this stuff from people and it's yeah you realize how big of an impact it really made on people and how it stuck with people the night before christmas was your favorite why is that i i that one was um it was that was one of the videos so we would do tv shows and then we also did home videos um which were I want to say they were two-hour videos, and those were the VHSs. And so those I, those were always really special, and it was always exciting to hear, ooh, how many, am I going to get on one of the videos this year, or how many they were bigger get on? Pro, They were bigger productions. Yes. Okay. They had different, bigger sets. And you, and you did some produ- oh, some I did. I mean, a lot of them. Yeah. Most did of them? Several all of them. Christmas, Christmas ones as oh, well. okay. Yeah, bigger okay. sets. That was Because they would always, usually went to, you know, faraway places for the videos. It wasn't just the yeah. playground. Yeah, so that was always very cool. And I think, I want to say it was like a two-week film period. Yes. Instead of, um, so it was just more fun because it was bigger. Absolutely, I yeah did one where I did Irish Step, which oh you did, really, wait 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 yeah, what was this? What? A, a little Irish Step, you know, a little <laughs> little jig, a little jig. Yeah. Oh okay, oh, yeah. you mean well, when well, you kick your the, what yeah. kicked your heels up or what? No, is it? No. I mean just like doing it's, your feet. Yeah. So get tell you explain to us. Well, yeah. I'm not an Irish dancer, but oh, but um, you mean like well, a, it's whatever just that a specific thing. Type of yeah, dance. so they brought in the two Irish dance, or oh, they brought cool. in a troop, and then had Barney join. Really? That's the kind of stuff we could do on video. We could go a but little how bigger. How you do that in that suit? A lot of practice. Because <laughs> he's a pro. A lot of, a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Spoken, well yes, said. Yes, a pro. Yes, yes. In fact, and I have found something, and Marissa, I think you're really going to like this, because I was thinking about dance, and, and you know... <laughs> Everything nowadays so much, you know, we're trying to focus on math and science, especially for girls. I mean, and that's important. But this was from um, a TED talk. And, you know, that is the nonprofit group that's devoted to spreading ideas through short, powerful talks. Absolutely. Okay. And this comes from Sir Ken Robinson. He's a British author and he's an international advisor on arts education. And I, what grabbed me was the headline that says, why dance is just as important as math. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And basically he said it should have the same status in schools as math, science, and language that may even help raise test scores because it's part of the arts. It's part that dance in itself is kind of science and mathematics wow. and humanities, and it can help restore joy and stability in troubled lives and ease the tensions in schools that are disrupted by violence and bullying. And we have heard by, from so many fans of Barney that said when they were little, they were bullied or, you know, but they would watch Barney and I'm thinking they were probably mm-hmm. singing along and dancing and along. And dancing along. Mm-hmm. And how good that made them feel. Absolutely. And that is what, I mean, what you just read right there is what I do for a living and that's what I preach. Um, that we're, that we are not just teaching dance. We are teaching life skills. We're, um, they're, they have a family that they, you know, your dance family is a family, just like the Barney family was. So, um, and you learn so much from dance. You get, you get, it's an, it's an outlet, um, that you can get things out. Kids need that. They are just like adults where they have all these emotions and they don't know how to process them. Dance is a great way to do that. It gets your mind working. Um, there's and you have to benefits. count. You have you to know, count. You've got, yes. I mean, you have to have some rhythm. You have oh, to yes. music. You're learning yep. about music. Yep. You're working memory all the time, short-term memory and long-term memory, memory, um, mm. lots of things. Yes, mm-hmm. that's more than just performing and more than just dancing. Then so. you already knew this. Oh, but I love hearing that. I love it. <laughs> well, <laughs> me amazing. too, because that's what I saw every night on tour. Is all of these little kids were they knew all the dance they were mm-hmm. doing them with us. Boy, I had to know my steps because the yeah. audience knew them. I was in trouble if I missed something. Well, and like music stick, I know you've been talking with people about how the music sticks with them. Think about when you're teaching kids things, a lot of times you'll um, come up with a song to teach a kid something because it sticks in your memory more when they're, when it's with a, when it's associated with a song. So there's yes. something about music that mm-hmm. triggers our brain a different way. Um, so 
I mean, music and dance is amazing and yeah, needed and for sure. Just as important as math and everything else. In well, and you can do your own TED talk. <laughs> there you go. You, you've known this for you've known this ever since you were a little kid. Mm. That is amazing. It really is. It's so interesting though that you all never really worked together, right? And yet. I still hear about the Marnie magic, the fan, the feeling. I mean, it was. It doesn't matter where you were in the Barney universe. No. Mm. It was all together. Mm -hmm. It was one of the reasons I wanted to do this show is that we've really never met. <laughs> but you see she how much she loved it, how serious it was. She understood the power of it and, and how the kids loved it. And it's, you know, talking about family and all the things that I felt. And you, you you just see that across the board, how much we all love this so much. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> little older kids, but right, little older Marnies. Yeah. I don't think I quite yeah. hit the role of Hannah this time. Yeah. But, oh my, but do you think would it, could it would it knowing that you have children and you deal so much with kids every day mm -hmm. at the studio, could, would this particular type of show resonate with kids today? I think that it would. Um, I really do. It's a um, the, it has good music. It um, it's educational, so that's what parents are looking for. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it definitely would. So you're gonna and, just you're you're gonna do it right, right, Carrie. You'd put that suit on again. <laughs> absolutely, I would. Absolutely, I, I know would. Jeff would. Oh, I mean, absolutely, <laughs> he would. Absolutely, you know, she worked with Jeff. I know. I did. Yes. Yep. I remember dancing next to him in the baby bop costume. Isn't that trying to do the. Do, do, do the jazz square. Do the jazz square. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably watching you all. He was probably watching the kids to get the steps down. Oh, probably for sure. So, what kind of what what thought do you want to leave with us, Marissa, in terms of what Barney means to you? What Barney means to me, it was um, it de it was a big part of my childhood. It is it shaped a lot of who I am. Um, it gave me this performance experience that I didn't realize at the time how big that was um, and and learning the whole production side of it learning um, you know seeing all of these people and all that they put into the show um, and I remember being on the show and hearing about other because I had never done anything like this so when I joined um, you know mo a lot of the kids were from agencies um, but they they were needing more kids, and so then they started coming out to the public schools. Which is amazing to me. That's crazy. I don't, it, it is. It I don't is know crazy. if they would do that now. I don't know. But, um, no, yeah, so I, I do remember feeling like, oh, all of these kids <laughs> that are, a lot of the kids here have done this before. You know, they had done modeling, and they had done stuff, and I was like, I'm just Marissa, and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Well, it got around town very quickly. All of a sudden, kids found out, and so they all wanted to be on the show. I mean, they knew the opportunity was there. But not everyone could tap dance and sing, sing in the <laughs> no, rain. In the rain. No. That was That's my yours. claim to fame. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, I hope you'll come back and visit us. Oh, I would love to. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're talking about these kid reunions. Yeah, we've got it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you've got, I know we've got some great guests coming up. Oh, I know absolutely. you heard Carrie talk about that at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep, so um, I'll choreograph a dance for. Done. For, for some, if we can bring the kids back, I'll choreograph the kids. Okay, well, there you go. I'll get you to this here. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I'm going to stretch, I'm uh -oh. have to stretch a little bit. <laughs> um, what, so what do you sing to your kids before they go to bed at night? I love you. What does it sound like? I love you. Keep going. You love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say you? I love you too. There's my the dancers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you so much. Tales podcast episode eight. What do I think about this episode? It was amazing. So far, she was a all-time star from half from season six, four to six. Excuse me. 
if you haven't seen my BNF vlog seasons um, for the, on my Vimeo account last year, you know how much time you're going to remember this on on television. So, there you go. Okay. I read comments, so, okay. Nancy, the show, Marissa, like, you know, you're exposing your yeah. Yeah, I know. Um. Oh, and, yeah, Drew, yeah, I know. Uh, hold on, yeah, I just gonna read the comments, but, anyway. That wraps up for Elgin Marie Ads, episode 326. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next one, which is called, gonna be... The Dinosaur Sensation, at chapter one. But until next time, this is Jefferson Goodbye. Peace out, baby. We can't wait to react to you guys very soon. But until then, Jeff Wall saying out. See ya. time I fail to really understand it. I never sought to meet the maker of reality. The one who gave the life that which is always happening. But I try all the time.